Hi, how are you doing? Good afternoon. So, I'd like to ask you to do me a favor. Could you please close your eyes? Great, now some of you are probably thinking, hmm, time for a little siesta. <laughs> but the reason I'm asking you to close your eyes is so you can see how you feel when you've been deprived of one of your senses. So hopefully you can hear my voice. How does this room sound to you? What else can you hear? So while keeping your eyes closed, please consider this. That most of the information we need to get during the day, at school, at work, even at this TEDx conference, comes to us through our ears. So please, keep your eyes closed and just use your listening while I tell you my story. I dreamed my whole life about coming to Spain, and I finally made it my junior year abroad. I remember it perfectly. The study abroad program, the very first week, organized a fiesta in a local discoteca so that the American students learning Spanish could meet the Spanish students who were learning English. Loud 80s music was booming, boom, boom, boom. But determined to use my Spanish skills, I took a deep breath, walked across the room, spotted two good-looking guys across the dance floor, and said in what was probably an awful American accent, Quieres bailar conmigo? So as it turns out, one of them was American, laughed and said no. And the other one, well, as it turns out, we danced. And 30 years later, he's my husband. <laughs> so, when I, so when I was in Spain, um, I only wanted, you know, I promised myself I would only speak Spanish. I wanted to use my Spanish skills. So when I didn't understand something, I would say, uh, no entiendo, perdona, ¿lo puedes repetir, por favor? Or, ¿qué? The problem was that when I got back to the United States and I was again speaking English with my friends, I found I was still saying, what? Can you repeat that? I'm sorry, I didn't get that. Can you say that again, please? And so finally, my friends, with their tough love, said, Dale, are you going deaf, or is your head still in Spain with your Spanish boyfriend? And I thought, hmm, maybe a bit of both. So I got my hearing checked. So if you haven't already opened your eyes, if you haven't shaved, please open your eyes. How did that feel? When I did this experiment recently with um, hundreds of teenagers, some told me that they couldn't wait to open their eyes, some told me that it was tiring, or even that they felt a little bit vulnerable. What if something happened to your hearing? What if something happened to one of your senses? So, what does that mean to be deaf in the 21st century? When I open my eyes, when I wake up in the morning, I don't hear my husband saying, uh, despierta, guapa. I don't hear my kids talking. I don't hear music in the kitchen. I don't hear birds outside. I don't even hear the water running when I brush my teeth. But thanks to Thanks to amazing technology. Oh, can we have that slide, please? No, the one before it? There we go. Thanks to amazing technology like cochlear implants and hearing aids, deaf people, even people who can't hear a lawnmower or an ambulance siren, can have a normal hearing life. Cochlear implants and Hearing aids have made it people to hear conversation. But this technology is not the human ear and it's not perfect. So I have to take control of my life to get the most information possible. For example, when I'm not a speaker at a conference, I usually try to get here early so I can sit in the front row with the other geeks instead of in the back row with the cool people. <laughs> it helps if you look at my face when you talk to me because I do a bit of lip reading. Here, I can show you. Look, I'm going to say mama and papa. Watch my mouth. Actually, why don't you try it? Look at your neighbor, please, and mouth the words mama and papa. Good. And you can see that they look almost exactly alike. Um, well, let's say lunches in Spain, even though I try to sit in the middle, can be quite a challenge. Big family Sunday lunches. Uh, because you know here how nobody interrupts each other and everyone waits their turn to talk. <laughs> Um, also, I love subtitles. 
So maybe you've seen a foreign movie in another language and you might miss part of the key dialogue or the punchline of a joke. Oh, welcome to my world. So that's why subtitling assures that I can see what I don't hear. And finally, there are lots of great apps and gadgets like FM systems that have been invented to help people with hearing loss, many of them by smart people, like some of you here in the audience today. So even though I'd experienced hearing loss in both ears, when my son James was born and not speaking by age three, I was worried. Something was wrong and I had some idea of what it could be. Now at that time, in Madrid, it was not the norm to have newborn hearing uh, screening, but we later got him tested and he had a moderate to severe hearing loss. Problem was, I didn't know what to do next. I didn't know how to teach him how to talk. I didn't know after three years of not hearing the sounds of speech, if he would be able to say, I love you, mommy. I did know that a child who had not heard his own voice would need the help of professionals. So I started my journey um, by trying to do some research. Because, well, in fact, 99% of deaf children are born to normal hearing parents. So that means, like me, many families, when they get this diagnosis, they don't know what to do. I started by looking on internet, and at that time, in Spain, there was not a lot of information available about speech acquisition and hearing loss, so I spent a lot of time surfing American websites. In the U.S., there are about um, well, in general, there are about 220,000 people who have been implanted with cochlear implants, and about a third of those are in the United States. Here in Spain, it's about 9,000. Um, most of those are children. Even babies as young as six months old can now hear themselves crying. I, I attended a conference by Dr. David Lunerman, and Dr. Lunerman said that the success of children with disabilities often depends on the self-esteem of the mother, and I thought, well, I have plenty of self-esteem. What can I do? I'm not a speech therapist. I'm not a deaf educator. So after the conference, I went up to Dr. Luderman and I said, well, what can I do? And Dr. Luderman, in his great wisdom, looked at me and said, I don't know, but you'll figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> and right then, he empowered me to make a change. And that's when I founded teoego.com a nonprofit virtual community of uh, deaf educators, speech therapists, audiologists, medical professionals, and especially loving families. Now we share our common experiences, we support each other emotionally, and we share materials in Spanish. And Teoigo.com has become important for 30,000 users a month, not just for me and my family, but for people who speak Spanish all over the world. So one of my key objectives for our virtual community, now in its sixth year, is to raise awareness and change, change perceptions that people have about hearing loss. I want people to know that while hearing loss is a loss, with our digital hearing aids and our cochlear implants, we can do anything we put our minds to. I'd like to show you a video now that I made with my son. It won a prize last year in the Alexander Graham Bell Foundation in Washington, D.C., and I think it illustrates pretty well uh, how, a, how an 11-year-old boy feels about his hearing aids. Can we see the video, please?
He's awesome, right? So as an American expatriate living in Spain, I'm a huge proponent of bilingual education. When James was born, experts here told me that because of his hearing loss, he could only learn one language. And I thought, well, which one? English? Spanish? So it's not that I didn't hear them, but I chose not to listen. I thought, every child is different. I think he can do it. And I did my own research, and I trusted my intuition. And now James is a high honor student at an international school on his way to becoming a citizen of the world, fluent in both languages. He's been on stage more times than I have. He's been at Model United Nations at his school, at school plays. He's been on the debate team. He's even been on TV telling other kids about hearing loss. Well, I once thought that he wouldn't be able to speak, now I can't shut him up. <laughs> Our virtual community is raising awareness and changing the way people think about hearing loss. By sharing our fears and our success stories, we are redefining deafness in the 21st century. Where once hearing loss was invisible, now we want you to see it. So the next time you see a person with a cochlear implant or hearing aid, please remember this. That person is overcoming obstacles because she feels empowered. That person can do anything she puts her mind to. And you can, too. And now that you know something about hearing loss, I just want to share a riddle with you. So what's the difference between a hearing person and a deaf person? A battery. <laughs> Thank you for listening.